I'm surprised you can still underestimate me after everything you've seen. I haven't shown my hand. I've shown one card. I've given my enemies a single provocative datum upon which to fixate. They have no idea what other cards I'm holding. It's a strong hand, believe me. I dealt it to myself. Robert Edwin House is an uncompromising libertarian technocrat. He's the man behind the curtain, pulling the strings to maintain his control of New Vegas no matter the cost or detriment. Masterfully voiced and given a tangible charisma by René Aubergena, as well as being brilliantly written by John Gonzalez, he's by far one of the best characters in a game that's overflowing with memorable NPCs. While none of Mr. House's cut content is critical, there is a lot of it, and this is likely going to be one of the longest episodes in this series. New Vegas' E3 footage reveals that Mr. House's computer face was originally much different and much creepier at some point in development. It also remains in an unused ending slide, but it's unknown why this was changed. The climate in the Lucky 38 world space is set incorrectly to urban world space climate. The developers actually created a climate specifically for the Lucky 38 penthouse and cocktail lounge, and it remains in the game files, but unfortunately, it's simply not selected. Changing it essentially improves the ambient lighting in the upper levels of the Lucky 38, and makes the area look noticeably better, particularly at night. There are three unused pre-war notes that were meant to appear in the Lucky 38. Unfortunately, all three notes are blank, though. If you clip through the ceiling of the Lucky 38 penthouse, you'll find a floating door called House Inner Secret Door. It's possible that this was an additional area inside of Mr. House's secret room, or perhaps it was the original entrance to Mr. House's control room, but it's honestly hard to say, as there's no other information referencing it in the game files. What do you need? Originally, Mr. House had an additional female Securitron named Marilyn. Her VO was recorded by Laura Kane, who voiced many characters in New Vegas, most notably Trudy and Red Lucy. She appears in the Collector's Edition card set, along with Jane. Jane and Marilyn are both references to Hollywood starlets Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe, both of which who dated Howard Hughes, who Mr. House is heavily inspired by. Marilyn still remains in the Lucky 38 penthouse, but she's disabled. Jane and Marilyn also both appear in the Lucky 38 suite, but are disabled there as well. This fact, along with Marilyn's only remaining lines of dialogue, suggests that the player would have bought suite upgrades from Jane and Marilyn instead of the terminal that's used in the final game. There are two unused player lines that reference her. The second line appears that it might relate to seducing Mr. House, which we'll talk about later in this video. It appears that she was cut relatively late in development, as Marilyn is still clearly referenced in Veronica and Jane's dialogue. I'm Jane, one of Mr. House's girls. We keep him entertained. We don't get many guests lately. Perhaps we can entertain you as well. What do you think of Mr. House? I was surprised he only had the two robot sex slaves. Josh Shawyer revealed in a forum spring post that there was an unfixable issue with her voiceover and had to be cut as a result. Many of Jane's dialogue topics are strangely labeled with the prefix Marilyn Jane which suggests that their dialogue might have been similar to the Think Tank's dialogue in the Old World Blues DLC. It seems possible that this was the issue with her dialogue, and why she was ultimately left on the cutting room floor. However, it's also possible that the recording of her VO was such low quality that she was scrapped, but we'll likely never know the exact reason. There's an unused test cell of the Lucky 38 penthouse still in the interior world space. Notably, it contains a human version of Mr. House called Mr. House Outdated. While he was used in-game at some point in development, he was never planned to actually appear. To make sense of this, you need to understand a little bit about how the GEC works. In New Vegas, dialogue can't just play. It has to be assigned to an NPC first, or in some cases, like radio stations or intercoms, a talking activator is used. For example, the iconic moment during the quest Come Fly With Me when Flight of the Valkyries is played, that song doesn't just play out of thin air. There's actually a talking activator in an inaccessible area of the Repcon building. 
Now the script, Lucky 38 House Computer Console script, shows that Mr. House's terminal was a talking activator that relayed Mr. House outdated's dialogue. At some point, the area designers found a better solution. Mr. House's terminal was turned into an NPC, he's technically an animal in the GEC, and Mr. House outdated was cut out, but he was never deleted from the game files, and he remains as an interesting artifact of the game's development. In the final game, there are only three ways to infiltrate Mr. House's control room to kill him, either by passing a hard science skill check, or by obtaining either the platinum chip, or one of the lucky 38 VIP cards. But it appears that there was going to be at least one additional method of accessing House's secret area that would have been available only to female couriers. Mr. House's dialogue script has a seduction variable that outlines the basis of this cut path. I suspect that after passing a speech check, or potentially using the Black Widow perk, Mr. House would have invited the player into a secret area to be scanned. There are two unused player lines that reference this. Was it just me, or were there signs of an attraction earlier, and would you like to scan me again? Mr. House also has two empty dialogue topics, Scanner Before and Scanner Inside, which would have played as the player approached the pod and as they were scanned. Strengthening this claim, there's an unused VR pod in the game files called Lucky 38 Player Pod, which is clearly where the player would have been scanned. There's also an unused script, Lucky 38 Player Pod script, that would have set Mr. House's seduction variable to 3. It seems that the main purpose of being scanned was that it would have allowed the player inside of Mr. House's secret area without setting off the alarms and engaging in combat. There are also four disabled turrets that would have appeared in the secret area. Now, it seems unlikely that there would have been four turrets in such a small area. Also, considering the size of the Lucky 38 player pod, I theorize that the secret room must have been larger at one point in development to accommodate these additions. It appears that the turrets were removed one by one because of balancing issues, as the Securitrons already provided a difficult threat on their own. Had they been included, these turrets would have made betraying Mr. House much more difficult, and would have further incentivized a female player to kill him using this method. It's unknown what would have happened after the player was scanned, but Raoul and Jane both have dialogue that clearly reference this occurrence, and it seems to suggest that this is how Jane and Marilyn's Securitrons were created. Sugar, I may be a robot on the outside, but on the inside, my neuro-computational matrix is an exact copy of Mr. House's favorite girl. I remember there were some weird stories about him, especially near the end. There was a tell-all in El Padioico de las Arboridas by a starlet house baby. She said they never, uh... Now don't make me spell it out, boss. Anyway, she said all he wanted to do was scan her brain and make her dress up in different outfits. It seems plausible that since Marilyn and Jane are literal copies of the Hollywood starlets, that the player's scanned consciousness might have been uploaded into one of Mr. House's Securitron. The Securitron near the secret room terminal was intended to tell players to stay away from it. There are at least three separate attempts at this, but the code itself in all three cases wouldn't actually work which suggests that whoever made these scripts might not have known what they were doing. On top of this, the Securitron's dialogue topic is missing. In the final game, the Securitron gives no warning to the player to stay away from the terminal. Cocktail Lounge! Victor has an unused line he would have used to announce arriving at the Cocktail Lounge. It's unknown why this was cut, but it likely has something to do with the fact that the Cocktail Lounge and the Penthouse share the same world space. There's an unused script called Lucky 38 Entrance Script that reveals the doors to the Lucky 38 would have closed each time you exited. You then would have had to talk to Victor for them to be reopened. This is most likely cut because if you killed Victor, there would have been no way to get back inside the Lucky 38. Speaking of Victor, The House Always Wins Part 6 has an unused quest stage where the courier would have met Victor outside the El Dorado substation after powering it up. Yes Man also has cut dialogue for the wildcard variation of this quest. It's unknown why this was cut, but it's possible that the effect didn't meet the designer's expectations 
is the script notes describe the Lucky 38 lighting up brilliantly, and it's also possible that the developer simply didn't have enough time to polish this properly. There you have it. New Vegas. Pretty as a diamond flush. Well, Rambler, it's a royal flush that beats all. So let's crown this hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Ain't that pretty? Don't take in the view for too long, though. Word is the Legion's on the move. Head on back and see the boss real soon. Here. Evening. Yes Man's dialogue interestingly mentions that New Vegas no longer needs electricity from Hoover Dam. Pretty nice, huh? But that's not all. Now that the Lucky 38's reactor is fired up, Vegas doesn't need the dam to have power. Vegas is energy independent. Woohoo! If we keep the dam running... The version of Victor that stands outside the Lucky 38 and Jane both have unused lines that would have played after the player betrayed Mr. House. Aw, oh, sugar, why'd you have to go make Mr. House mad? Now we've got to get all messy shooting into little bits. I wish I'd left you in the ground to rot. Draw! If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. Democracy? You mother... Behind the elevator that leads to Mr. House's control room, there's a disabled NPC called Lucky 38 Alarm Woman. There's also a blank dialogue topic associated with her called V Dialogue Mr. House Room Breach. It seems that once the player broke into the secret area, a warning message would have played along with the alarm. V Dialogue Mr. House Last Will Testament is a recording that was supposed to be broadcast along the strip once the player killed Mr. House. If this statement is being broadcast, I am deceased. Please approach a Securitron and take one of the printed obituaries. I, Robert Edwin House, am deceased. Please approach a Securitron and take one of the printed obituaries. This would have explained how the entire Mojave knows about his death right after it occurs. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? The recording also instructs listeners to take the note, A Tragedy Has Befallen All Mankind, from a Securitron. This would have made a lot more sense than the way it's handled in the final game, where the note is simply placed For into instance, your inventory without explanation. For instance, when the player tells Caesar of Mr. House's death, your chances of he references that he's already there. read Mr. House's Minimal obituary. Test. Mr. House has around 20 unused recorded dialogue lines that would have played when the player was in various areas of the Lucky 38. Most of these lines are labeled with the prefix, Mr. House pissed, and are clearly connected to the also unused variable, V story event, Mr. House pissed. After the player somehow betrayed Mr. House, he would have taunted them in the Lucky 38 casino in Penthouse. Vegas will still rise again. Your betrayal won't defeat me. The Lucky 38 will be your grave. I'll finish what Benny couldn't get right. Finally, as the player reached the control room, he would have pleaded for his life. Hold on. Now hold on. Just a moment. Turn around and leave, and I'll... I won't attack you any further. Just stay away from the console. It doesn't do anything. You've come back to kill me this time, I assume. Ironic how this turned out. The thousands of hours I spent calculating odds, running projections, planning for every contingency, only to be done in by a mail carrier with a grandiosity complex. Lucky 38, Mr. House Terminal 02, the terminal in Mr. House's control room, has a commented out additional option that appears to check if the player has the platinum chip or the Lucky 38 keycard in their possession. This suggests that it was at one time possible for the player to hack into Mr. House's secret room, 
but then be unable to kill him and be forced to leave. Eventually, all of this was cut, and in the final game, it's impossible to exit the control room without first killing Mr. House. All of this is seemingly related to the unused quest, VMQ House Lockdown. This script outlines that once the player started combat in the Lucky 38, Mr. House would have locked down the elevator for 24 hours until hopefully the player calmed down. Essentially, the idea was that the player would have only been able to access the elevator to reach the casino floor and then be forced to exit the Lucky 38 until the lockdown ended. Mr. House has two unused dialogue lines that reference the player having attempted to kill him before. There will be no repeat of the trouble we had last time, I trust. I'm optimistic that this conversation will go more smoothly. The lockdown script itself has a lot of issues, and one of the developers actually left several notes in the script detailing why it won't work. Furthermore, the entire quest appears to hinge on being able to restart a completed quest objective, which can't happen in this game engine. It seems likely that these complicated scripting issues were why this quest was cut. As for Mr. House's dialogue, the audio files are recorded in mono rather than stereo, so they could have only been heard a few feet from the NPC slash activator that was playing them. It's possible that this is the reason that his pissed dialogue was cut. I recently had the opportunity to speak with Jason Bergman, who was lead producer on Fallout New Vegas, as well as George Salgado, who was one of the area designers. During our conversations, I asked them both about the seduction scene, as well as the lockdown script. Jason replied, I vaguely recall something about scaling back House's rooms, but his questline came in late, and what did get in was super impressive, so it's hard to remember. George replied, Of the seduction scene, I can tell you little. I was not responsible for that portion of the Lucky 38. In that area, I helped with some scripting, especially with the scripts that govern the Securitrons and what that would mean to the strip. But, in the end, the lockdown feature was more trouble than it was worth. For design reasons, we decided to have Mr. House not lock down the tower if he became angry at the player. He takes more drastic measures in that case. When siding with any of the factions other than Mr. House, you're forced to kill him. But the cut note, Offer to Permit Annexation, reveals that this wasn't always going to be the case. It was apparently at one time planned for Mr. House to concede that the NCR were the best option for New Vegas. It's unknown how this would have occurred, though. Perhaps after the player foiled Mr. House's plans by destroying the Securitron army at the fort, he would have surrendered to the NCR. Or maybe the player could have convinced him to give in through a speech check. Regardless, there are many lines of unused dialogue that reference this outcome. God damn that Mr. House for selling Vegas out to the NCR. The whole Mojave will have to join up. Even that old house bastard gave in to the NCR. We're the only ones to make a stand. Be advised, Mr. House has voluntarily, decided to become a citizen of the NCR. Sovereignty over the Vegas Strip will be transferred to the NCR at a date yet to be determined. Have a nice day. If Mr. House is going to lower his standards, we'll just have to raise ours. During Mr. House's questline, you're forced to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel. However, the House Always Wins Part 5 has an unused quest stage that reads, Optional. Inform Mr. House that you've negotiated a peaceful solution with the Brotherhood. This quest stage even appears in the strategy guide, which suggests that it was cut relatively late. But while these options may have been planned at some point in development, they were cut as a design choice as opposed to time or console constraints. When asked about this, Josh Sawyer replied, With House, there's not much negotiation. He knows exactly what he wants with very little margin for course correction. You can go behind Colonel Moore's back to ally NCR with the Brotherhood of Steel. There's no going behind House's back and staying on his good side. House is strong and stable within a small sphere of influence, but dictatorial within that sphere. He leverages economic power and access to resources, water and electricity, to maintain control as far as that goes. Most of the cut content that we've talked about saddens me that it didn't make it in, but not so much in this particular case. Considering how out of character it would have been for Mr. House to surrender or compromise, cutting these options was the right decision in my opinion. And that's all for Mr. House's cut content. I want to apologize to anyone who watched this video when I initially posted it, as it had some missing voiceovers among other issues. 
I did my best to address those issues without remaking the entire video, and hopefully it's a little better. In the next few weeks, I have two interview-based episodes akin to the Wild Wasteland video I posted earlier, and I'm very excited to share those in particular. As always, thanks for watching, and like and subscribe for more content like this.